have our friend and esteemed uh, note school investor and uh, a friend of ours, Mr. Richard Thornton, all the way from the Bay Area in San Francisco, California. Good morning, Richard. Good morning. How are you guys? We're great, Richard. Glad you're here. Good. Glad to be here. Great and absolutely excited to have you here this morning. And and uh, you've got a you've got a great story, Richard. I mean, you have. Uh, yeah, we we appreciate your story. And uh, I'm going to kind of run some run a few slides in the background, and I'll be in the background. I'm going to let Eddie uh, talk. We'll, we'll talk a few minutes, okay? That's great. Whatever you'd like, Joe. Okay, very good. So, Richard, I think that one thing that's interesting about your story is is you were in another segment of real estate, which was commercial real estate lending, right? And you kind of made a, a definitive choice to kind of move away from that for your own kind of private wealth building. You were able, you guys were able to sell your company and do well. Congratulations. Thanks. And uh, now you're on the next horizon, which is the wealth building strategy for yourself. And uh, I know that you, Martha was on uh, last week, right? right. And uh, you know, Martha very well. You and, you and her have collaborated a lot about your strategies. And uh, so I know that uh, I know that you are fully aware of how she does some things and her likewise. And we just thought it would be really cool to kind of do a one, two punch and have you on today. And Martha essentially told a good story last week about how she got started with her dad teaching her this stuff. How did you, what, what, what made you focus on wealth, Richard? <laughs> Retirement. <laughs> Well, you, you um, know that most real estate people today are focused on transactional income and not growing that growing their wealth at the same pace. Yeah. Right? So uh, one of the things I really uh, like about the note business in general is I came from a very regulated uh, environment, a uh, very cookie cutter environment. And um, as you know, notes are anything but that, private notes. Uh, and I like that. I like the fact that um, you're helping people, the fact that uh, you can be creative in a lot of things that you're doing uh, and basically chart your own path. And so that's exciting for me. That's great. Well, you have done really good with it and you particularly have become very successful at raising private capital. And you and I use the expression, the burnout landlord, right? Because we found that a lot of people found that the rental business was a lot more of a job than it was just an investment. And uh, they tend to do really well with you. Tell me about your typical investor. What, what, what is he? What's his story? Uh, my typical investor um, or my avatar, as we're uh, taught to say, uh, is somebody who's 50 and over, somebody who has a combined uh, family income of 200 plus and probably has about that much money uh, to invest uh, in addition to whatever else they have in their self-directed IRA or their 401k or, or whatever. So he's got 200,000 in dry personal cash, plus some, probably some more money in a retirement account. Correct. And he isn't buying the next rental. No, uh, he's not. Um, he's, he's not. Uh, I, I can, uh, some of them have rentals, um, I, I will say that uh, with my current marketing campaigns, I've been surprised to find how many people want to convert from rentals to notes. Well, they, they want to move from uh, a part-time job to be in the bank. Right, right. Let's look at it. Let's look, uh, Joe, pull up some slides for us, if you will. Let's, let's just do, go through a quick case study. And I want to ask you, Richard, like your kind of your thought process, like how, when you're, when you're looking at these deals, what are you looking for? And so tell, tell us about this deal. Okay. This is a little deal that I found in Hamilton, Ohio. Um, nice, clean little neighborhood, a little house, as you can see. Uh, the value on it's about 76000 And I knew I could um, get the note on it for about half of that. Uh, when I looked at it, um, I had a nice long pay history uh, on it. So as you can see there, the loan balance was 37,000. Um, I also liked the term, since most of what my practice is is selling partials, I like to sell the front end of the mortgage, um, usually around 10 years. 
and keep as much of the back end as I possibly can. And that's really where I make my profit on a lot of my deals. And All so, right, so Richard, you live in the Bay Area in California, and you but you're buying an asset is that's located in Ohio. Why right. are you okay with that? I'm okay with that because the margins are better. Uh, and the deals are more bite-sized. So I looked at um, a note about a month ago. Uh, it's out here in California. Uh, it was an $800,000 note, and uh, the person had a private mortgage on it. And you say, well, why does somebody who has an $800,000 mortgage need a private note? Uh, he was a tech guy, and he's from India. And he could not qualify, even though he had plenty of income, could not qualify for a mortgage. His mortgage rate was 6% and I would buy it for five. And that's not something that's A, of that size and B, of that rate. It's really remarkable. So I get better margins in the Midwest. Yeah, I mean, this is a nice looking house. Yeah, it's, it's a nice clean, looking, right, nice clean looking little house. You know, mom and dad live there and have got um, uh, very nice jobs. Uh, I could get a, a decent tail out of it and I could still give my investor uh, a nice secure return. Now, most of my investors want to be completely passive. Uh, they want to be set it and forget it. So that's that's what I focus on. I sell home notes and, uh, and other things too, but this is the, the basis of my practice. All right. So the payment is $348 a month and we can see there that there has been literally, is that correct? 94 payments made? That's right. So I had a nice long pay history on this. They've been playing like clockwork for all that time. And that to me is always the biggest factor is, is what my payment history is. Yeah. So you, so, so you're looking at their propensity to pay their likelihood of paying and you're going, I can measure a lot of that looking forward based on 94 years of looking back. Right. Or exactly. 94 months. Yeah, exactly. I mean, That's they've been like eight years. I'm sorry. That's eight years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they'd been very reputable up to this point. And I mean, you know, they'd had a, a few hiccups here and there like we all do, but nothing more than like 60 days late. And then they made it up. So that sounds good to me. 350 a month, 348 a month is their payment. That's their house payment. Right. That's not their cable bill. No, that's just their their principal insur insurance. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> their P&I payments. And that's what comes to me or the investor. I think Martha's cable bill is three forty eight a month. Please. Yeah. <laughs> as busy as as Martha is, I can't say that uh, she's watching much TV though. So I yeah. should have reconsider that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about risk here. Let's talk about risk in the deal. How much how much money you have in it compared to what the collateral is worth? Tell us about that, Richard. Okay. Well, uh, when I buy any note, I don't care if I'm going to broker it or whatever, I always assume that I'm going to own it because um, A, a it's, it's safer. Uh, investors like to hear that. And that's one of my selling points. Uh, but B, sometimes I do. Sometimes it, uh, everybody's got different criteria. What I liked about this is I had a great pay history. Uh, I had a nice little community that's very stable uh, and growing. Uh, obviously, the collateral has been taken care of. And I'm at 42% of property uh, value. Um, those are that's a good cushion and um, a good assurance that they're going to continue to pay. All right, so let's compare that to another investment. How do you see this and this buying this note and having thirty one eight into it, but the but the collateral, the underlying collateral, the house. You know, you don't own the house; you just own the mortgage on the house, right? How would you compare that to some other investment? Well, I don't know of any other investment that I can uh, invest in uh, stock market annuities or anything like that and have three or four ways to get my money back if uh, for, for some reason the payment stream fails. Uh, and that's what I always look for. I want to make sure I have at least three exits on any, any property. So in this instance, I could foreclose and sell the property. I could rent it out. The rent is more than double um, in this neighborhood of what the mortgage payments are. As a matter of fact, I think it's almost triple. Uh, and I could also um, sell it to a, a another note holder who likes to buy um, non-performing notes uh, because they think that they'd like to take care of that that upside. So that's those are three very strong factors to me. Yeah, and and you just don't have. 
you just don't have the dollars in this deal. If you owned it as a rental, you've got all the dollars invested in it, right? Right. You've got all the dollars invested in it. And and then uh, by the time you um, get your rent, uh, even though it's three times what your payments are here, you've got to take out all your expenses, your insurance and everything else. Uh, and you've got to deal with all that. On a, that's, the, that's the three T's, toilets, tenants and trash. You have to deal with all that. And buying a note, we don't have to do with that. They, you know, That's not your problem. One thing I like about a note is that you are the bank. You're secured by the property. In this analogy, you were very secured by the property, more than twice the property value of compared to what you invested in the note. And then a note means that you basically are receiving a cash flow of payments. And so this little time bar here shows that three forty eight a month over the life of the note. Right. Two hundred sixty six months. You bought it for thirty one. You did a pretty innovative strategy here, Richard. You bought the whole cash flow. Right. I bought the whole, ca whole cash flow. And what my goal is in every partial I sell is um, I try to uh, cash out and put just a little bit of money in my, my current pocket. Um, I My whole strategy uh, is to roll my portfolio three times a year if I can. So let's say I have one fifty thousand dollars okay i want to buy a note on january 1st be out of it in 90 days um and, and have a partial done uh roll that over buy another one and buy another one i'm not always successful at that, that quite quite often i only get to do two a year but you can see if you have um you know six or seven hundred thousand dollars what whatever it is that you might have in your your self-directed ira and you keep rolling this over you're building a very nice annuity for yourself so figuratively speaking, Richard, you bought the whole pizza. I bought the whole pizza. I sold part of the pizza and I made a profit, uh, albeit small. I sold this. I bought it for $31,815. I sold it for thirty-four. So I put $3,000 in my pocket, nothing to brag about and certainly nothing to live off of. We should all um, be cognizant of the fact that we can't live off of selling partials. You have to have a day job. You have to have some other form of income if you want to have a solely uh, partial uh, selling um, practice. But you made three thousand. But you own the back ten years of this note. I do. In addition to the three thousand you already made. That's that's correct. Joe calculated your yield on there. It's in the little green box there. Mm hmm. <laughs> Joe's very good at very high. You know, you, you, you get exact numbers and he gets a little bit fuzzy, but very high is a good way for him to look at it. Uh, yeah, it is a very high yield. Mm -hmm. You know what I say? It's enough. It's enough. That's right. It's yeah. enough. Now, so, even so, the question I quite often get from investors is, well, or fellow students is they say, well, what if he pays off early? Okay. I still have a, a margin in there uh, where I would get some more money. Um, uh, off the unpaid balance that wasn't paid. But if even if he pays off, um, I don't know, uh, after four payments, that's four payments that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Yeah. And just, I don't want to get too wrapped around the axle and a lot of numbers today, but there is a, there is a process that note school goes through and shows people how to calculate that. And it's a solid number. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good number. You, if it paid off, let's just say in a couple of years, you probably would make about 10 grand. Mm -hmm. So you would have made 3000 up front. You wouldn't have gotten all the money because it did pay off early but you would have still gotten a, probably another 10 grand and that's a, that's a solid deal. And, and the residual factor in this and the wealth building factor in this is huge. If I, if I looked at your math there and you said, I want to do this three times a year, you've made $9,000 on your money up front. And if that, if that math held true, the 48,000 at the end, you've made almost $150,000 in future wealth. Yes. Um, on, 50, on a thirty-five thousand dollar investment. Yes, I, I don't want to hold myself up as as typical Eddie, but I would say that I, I more than covered the cost of my tuition for note school in the first year. <laughs> well, I, I would say that math yeah. and a little bit more, right? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so this is this is a strategy that we teach. This isn't all that we teach. There's other things that we can do, and there's ways to make a little more money up front. But this was a heck of a good strategy, and you could have gone into the, just the rental, regular rental property business, right? I could have, yeah. I mean, uh, after we sold my company, I, I had a whole lot of ways to go. But, um, you know, when we sold the company, we had 70 people to, to manage, and I was sort of done with that. And so this was a very good um, path for me to, to go. So I learned this, as you know, from my father-in-law and I didn't sell a company with 70 people. I was living in a 10 by 40 mobile home. <laughs> True story, right? Yeah. So right. you can kind of do this from any perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you can do it when you, when you're at a stage where you're, where you want to work part time and you're trying to grow wealth. And uh, you can still make transactional money, as you showed. So that's really um, it. so. In, anything else about investors? What do they commonly tell you? Why do they Why do they like this? They like this because of the security of the transaction. They they um, they also like it because I'm somewhat of an uh, asset manager for free, uh, meaning that they know that I'm I'm not getting really paid until the end of the transaction and when they're uh, paid off. And so that's very valuable to them. That's that's a huge selling point. Um, they typically don't know that I make a little bit of money up front, but even if they did, it's insignificant in uh, when you look at the entire deal. Uh, it, what's my my biggest concern is after they've been paid off, uh, and that means a lot to them. Look, it's a it's a lot less work than a rental, and they can sleep at night seemingly better. Right. 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 Joe. So, you know, Richard, here's the here's my take on this being in the back and getting to hear this and knowing you and knowing your business. You're not just using thirty five thousand dollars. Right. I mean, you, you're, you're doing as many of these deals as you can possibly deal. But just understand for people that do just have thirty five thousand dollars, they can take that strategy and turn that and what, you know, Eddie termed here a few months ago, and we laugh about it, the capital recoupment plan, right? That's what your turns are all about. You know, you turn that money over and over and over. And then uh, we have a friend of ours that says, I'll take 10, right? <laughs> so again, you know, those are the deals that you just hit on a daily basis. You know, you knock them out of the, you know, I, I call it knocking them out of the park. They're not home runs to most people, but you know, it's just the consistent level of doing this. Talk about that, you know, just a minute and and kind of what that means to you. And then and then um, some best advice you can give some new investors out there that are coming into the fold. OK, well, I'd say that you don't have to have a lot of money to do this. As you just indicated, if you can pull together enough money to buy a note from friends and family, uh, you can buy your first note, roll it over, and then take a few profits, maybe give them your the upfront money, but keep the back for yourself, or there's a lot of different ways to, to slice it. Um, what I would tell people is uh, to get a website, get yourself known. Uh, if you want to sell uh, whole notes, which is a good way to start to generate upfront income, it's just broker notes. Um, go to Notes Direct or wherever and buy some notes uh, and sell them to different uh, individuals. That way you can get some good current income. Uh, you get to know the business um, and what's important. And therefore, you can move forward and then you can move into to partials. So that would be the number one thing. The number two thing is start building content on the web. So get a YouTube channel, um, brand it. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel for American Note Capital, you can see I've got about 21 videos up there uh, and I'm adding to them every month. And uh, people like that. They want to know that you know what you're talking about. And that's um, a huge marketing tool. That's great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and you do. You have a, I was you have thinking a... they might want to go to Note School too. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, yeah. And, and Richard, what I, you know, what I hear you saying is, is there's, there is certainly more than, 
than one way to make money. And we do. We talk about making money today for those that want to just they need eating money is what we call it at note school. But then there's, you know, some people want to make money today like you're doing and then they've got money down the road. Right. So, you know, one of our favorite sayings at note school is it's your chalk and your chalkboard. And as you come in and this is one of the strategies that I know you love and, and I love. And, you know, as, as Eddie and I have talked about, I mean, Eddie started in 1980. I started in 1990, and I did buy and sell all the note for 20 years before Eddie said, "Why in the heck are you doing that? Why don't you keep some of those back end, right? So uh, sell some partials. So you know, it's 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 all about it's all about the knowledge for sure, right?" 